Hello everyone, today I want to show you my game engine, a bit of usage with it and how we can make a very simple scene. The main idea is not to build a, a full game out of it, I just want to show you how it works, how you can get the basic feeling of it and how the workflow is kind of uh, rolling with it. So the engine, as might, some of you might know, is um, C++ based engine and here you can see the structure of the uh, project uh, in this directory uh, you can see i have my c++ projects they are just regular c++ projects and my game is this little dll which is going to get loaded uh, in in the engine while it's running so the game is a separate thing from the engine uh, knowing that uh, the idea of the engine is that it's not like unity or any other game engine the idea is that in order to build your game you have to modify the engine uh, of course if uh, the idea for your game is quite simple and you could achieve it with the tools that the engine provides uh, you may not need to modify the engine but for more complicated ideas you should modify the engine yourself uh, hearing this at the first time sounds a little bit uh, not okay but in the long run, this enables you to um, implement quite complicated stuff uh, without uh, introducing too many interfaces and complicated logic to get things paired together. Uh, you might know where, when you have um, third party uh, host application being at 3ds Max or Maya, sometimes, or even game engines, sometimes making the simplest thing which you know is like changing a simple fold variable quite tedious and that's the, the the main idea of the engine the engine is written in quite a simple way and modifying it and bending it to your will should be quite simple okay so having that out of the way let's launch the engine uh, okay so this is our empty game project you can see i have an empty scene and over here, I have a really basic dummy game object. Uh, each game object in, in the engine needs to inherit from this little class. Uh, this class basically provides the basic functionality of every game object that can participate in, in a 3D scene, like this one. Uh, besides the game object that you've created for your game, in this case, we have only that one object, we have other default objects which are commonly used in other games, almost in any game, like a camera, which we can place in the scene and walk the scene through it. Uh, we can place a white, we can place a locator, which is just an object with a position. We can place a 3D model, place a 3D model. No, don't freeze, don't die on me. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I don't know what's happened, maybe the walk will tell, oh yeah, that's what's happened. Uh, the thing that happened is, the uh, for this project, the shaders were not compiled, and it compiled the, the shaders for the first time, so the next time we shouldn't see any delays. So, yeah, with that out of, of, out of the way, I want to show you the first feature I... And it's not a coincidence that I have Visual Studio and the engine side by side. This is to showcase the first feature. It is hot reloading. Hot reloading enables me to modify code uh, while the game is running. And to show you this, I'm going to make a little uh, object of our type. It's called dummy actor. And I can go here and create a dummy actor. As you can see, I have it in the scene. It currently has absolutely nothing in it. So that's why we don't see anything. And let's say, for example, that I want to expose a simple floating point uh, variable to the editor for my uh, game object. This floating point variable might uh, uh, might be whatever you want. Might be a jump jump height of a player. Might might be something else. Doesn't matter. So yeah, yeah let's create a float. Name it my float. Give it a default value of, I don't know, zero. And 
Just by doing that, the, the variable exists. I can build the engine. You will see it will revolt uh, my game. You can see, yeah, it, it said it revolted the game. But if I click here, you don't see it. You don't see my fault over here. That is because uh, the reflection system of the engine doesn't know that this uh, actor type has this fault var value. I need to tell the reflection system that this value exists. And this happens in this, in this little block. It's not defined inside of the um, definition of the structure. I didn't want to do that because it makes the structures, the, stru the structures really heavy, hard to look at, and you cannot uh, add reflections to external types. For example, std string, I cannot modify std string or std vector, and I couldn't have a, a reflection if I had to modify the class itself. It's in the standard library. But this here enables me to define the reflection of my types outside of my types. So if I don't need the reflection, the code is not going to be polluted by it. Uh, having uh, the need to type this manually, it's a bit tedious, but when you do it, do it for uh, quite a bit of time. Oh, am I recording? Yeah, I'm recording. If, when you do it for quite a bit of time, uh, it's not it's not that bad. It's just a, a few seconds. So uh, I, in here, in this block, I, I said to the reflection system, hey, add an actor type. And it knows that the actor type is there. So now I'm going to tell him, tell the reflection system that this type has my fold value. value. So I, I can say refl member. Uh, the member is on dummy actor, so I say dummy actor, and I type the uh, member. Now I save, I build a solution, it takes a little bit to build, takes a little bit to build, and now it, it's built, and if I select it, you can see I have my fold value here. As you can see, the reflection system does not does allow you to modify the memory layout of the objects, not just the, the logic inside of them. I can now remove that, op that reflection, uh, that uh, structure, and it will still work. Uh, the way it, this thing works is by uh, when the engine sees that your game has has been changed, it saves the um, the game world. You can see saving game level succeeded. It saves a backup a backup file. It destroys all the memory associated with your game loads the new DLL and rewards the old object again. Okay, so uh, let's remove this thing. It's just for um, demo purposes and revert back to the original state where the object is quite simple. Okay, right. So the next thing uh, that I want to show you is assets. Assets are uh, quite a big, a big part of any game or any well, 3D applications. Uh, these assets could be 3D models, textures, sounds, and whatever. The way the engine uses um, assets is by importing them in its own structure. Uh, the, import, the import part is needed because the engine uses these files uh, as an in, uses an internal file format for it to be optimized and fast. So, uh, right here, you can see I have uh, and yeah, let's start with the other one. Uh, I have uh, a few scenes. This one will be the second one, maybe the first one loaded. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. So as you can see, I have a very simple 3D model of a ball that happens to be a cat. And I want to import it in the engine. The way I do it is I go here in the engine settings. Go here in the engine settings. Say, uh, let, let, let's create a folder actually for it. Let's say uh, cat ball model and create a folder. And inside that folder, I will import this cat ball model. Say import. And now you can see it's loaded and I can instantiate it in, uh, in the scene. Uh, okay, so uh, let me show you the other import type. Let's say this is. Uh, called level models create and import here and I'm going to import this file but before I import it you can see that 
here is this checkbox. This checkbox enables me to uh, import a single uh, scene file, in this case, this one, this FBX file, as multiple uh, files. And this is quite useful because if you're making, let's say, uh, something like modular environment, like this thing here, it consists of lots of um, objects. And usually what you want to do in your game is place each one of these by itself to make a, a big level. However, editing such a similar objects in different scenes, it's quite tedious. So this enables you to create environments and other stuff, even basic characters in one scene and then import it as multiple scenes in the, in the editor. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to import this level, import this multi multiple models, say import and bang, it imported all of these objects. And I can, again, instantiate them in the scene, do whatever, I can undo and redo. This is again done by the uh, reflection system that we mentioned earlier, uh, whatever. Okay, so uh, the uh, thing that I wanna do for this little demo is to make a, a simple game with a ball, ball rolling game like balance. Uh, I'm not that fast at typing, so I have already prepared some of the code and I'm going to copy paste it to make it to make it work. So uh, in the most engines like Unity, for example, you have components for your uh, objects. Uh, in this case, we have something that I call traits. Uh, one question that you might have is that in Unity, you don't really have uh, game object types. You have scripts that you assign to entities, which makes these objects uh, in of itself a type, but it's not really a typed object that exists in a scene with a type. It's just some game object, some entity, which you have to interpret for yourself its type. In this case, this is the other way. This is something like a bit of more of a classical approach to the problem. We have an actor and everything that is an actor has to inherit from it, but uh, we can share, uh, we can still have that component side of things by having these traits. These traits are, as I said, just like components. They could be something very fundamental to the engine, like 3D models uh, assigned to an object, maybe a material, maybe a link to another object, or they could be something gameplay specific. For example, a health trait for your game objects to apply damage to others. Okay, so uh, the engine provides a few basic uh, um, traits. One is the rigid body for the physics and one is a trait model um, for to assign a 3D model to the object so it could be visible somehow. Uh, and after uh, the way we make uh, traits available for the object is we call this little function on the trait itself. These traits are polymorphics in some way, so you could have multiple implementations of the same uh, type of a trait uh, that's beside the point here. Uh, we have our trait model. Okay, let's make our game object, uh, this dummy actor, this, this is gonna be our uh, our ball model. Uh, all right, uh, it's gonna be our ball in the scene and we're gonna use the cat. Uh, right now, as you can see, uh, we have this object in the scene, but it doesn't have a model. So let's add a model to the trait. <clears throat> this create method is called when the object is created, no matter what. Okay, so we're gonna add a model and we're gonna specify a path to that uh, object over here. I can copy that path. I'm not sure if that works actually. Ooh, not, not working exactly how I wanted it. It should uh, display a relative path. Nevertheless, we can, uh, I hope, 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 we can fix it. Okay, let's build it again. See what happens. Yay, our object now has a model uh, in the scene. Okay, uh, now let's, uh, let's, let's make it move. Let's make it simulate a bit. So I'm gonna first add a floor. To the scene because uh, what we're gonna happen is that uh, our uh, ball would just start falling to the infinity and this little object is gonna help us with that by not happening. All right, 
So uh, we have this and I'm gonna copy paste the settings for this rigid body because I cannot remember it by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, basically, I'm gonna go over it, of course. Uh, we, we have, we get our trait, rigid body trait. We say we are gonna create a collision shape, which is a sphere with a radius of one. Uh, and we're gonna set the friction of the object. We set the damping of the movement. These are some values which I played a bit and I saw that are, they are pretty good for a easy ball rolling game. Okay, so now we have a rigid body. Let's build and see what's gonna happen. Hopefully it's not cr gonna crash. Okay, it, it did not crash. Let's move this thing a bit and let's start the simulation of the game. Uh, uh, oh yeah, there is no camera. Okay, so the simulation in the game can happen in two ways. One with the Unity with in, in a different uh, instance of the scene and one within the editor scene, like here. And you can see our ball is falling. Not very graceful, but it does what it does. And the other way is to uh, run the uh, uh, in a separate scene. Uh, the benefit of um, playing the scene inside the editor is mainly for debugging. It's easier to see what's going on and having one instance and being able to easily tweak it. Okay, so we have our uh, uh, rigid body and now let's now make it make it move. Let's make it move. How do we make it move? Let me copy the code from here. Of course, where is it? Where is the code for that amazing thing? Okay, okay. Hmm. Give me a little second. Uh, input state. Input state. No, I don't want to jump. I wanna. I wanna the camera thing. I wanna keyboard, maybe. Uh, input there. Ah, yeah, that's that's the thing that I wanted. Okay. Uh, basically, here we're gonna capture the input of the game and um, translate it to world space. Usually, you're gonna like make it relative to the camera you're walking from. This is what's going on here with all that uh, a lot of computations here, but this is supposed to be a quick demo, so we're not gonna do it. So, uh, let's capture the input state, transform it somehow to world space, input tier WS, input tier, oh yeah, sure, sure. Copy this, input tier in world space, yada, yada, yada. What else? What else? Oh, I can like uh, the engine returns the input state no matter if your uh, uh, application is uh, active or not. So we could ask was active while polling. If it was active while polling, we're going to read the input and otherwise we are not going to read the input. OK, so we have our input direction, input direction in world space. And now we're gonna... Okay, so the next part we have the input. And we need to apply a force uh, to the object based on this input. Input the earth word space, right. Okay, okay, and this needs to be a little bigger. Who knows? I, I forgot the code, I wrote it quite a bit of time ago. Okay. Okay, let's copy this thing as well. Oh, yeah. maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Basically what it does, it says, if the uh, window of the game was active while the uh, keys were pressed, we're gonna take the input direction based on the arrow keys. This is just a shortcut, you can compute it yourself. We're going to translate them in workspace. Again, we'll just have uh, these hard-coded values 
where the forward and right should mean uh, when you translate keyboards to world space. In this case, we just have hard coded them. And then based on that, we are gonna apply some force to make the object move. Uh, the force, uh, basically, uh, um, yeah, whatever, it, 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 it adds more force in the direction you want to move and not in the direction the ball is already moving. So it wants to dampen the, the direction where the ball is uh, moving if it doesn't, uh, uh, if it's not the same with the player input, this makes the rolling quite a bit easier. Uh, for the game, and I, I, I think that should be enough to make the, the ball roll. Will the ball roll? Will it crash? If no fails, it should roll. Do you roll? It does roll. I, I'm pressing the arrow keys, and it is indeed rolling. Okay, let's make a simple scene here. To showcase the other thing is it is basically the tools for uh, making the, the levels. Let's delete this, this little guy because it, it's in our way. And let's open the um, um, models that we've imported for the level. And as you can see, I can just place them here, drag and drop, and it will create uh, an object of type static obstacle. Uh, as you know, we, there are a lot of types. You can override this behavior, but by default, this is what you want to do. Uh, if the object is not a static ob obstacle, it will. Um, you, you you should probably create the game object that represents the, the logic that you want to make. In this case, uh, the static ob obstacle are really just decors and obstacles. So this is quite a, an easy way to do. Okay, so I want to show you the. Uh, let, let's make a little bit more of these. Oh, another thing in the engine. This thing will autom automatically create a rigid body for the object. And even if the object is not, uh, not a box, by default it will create a box, but in Blender you can uh, actually specify, uh, that's, not a, that's not a good idea, maybe that's that one, you can specify a collision geometry for uh, that object specifically. So as you can see in this sub uh, sub model, we have um, a collision sh uh, a geometry shape, and we have something with a very special name, so the SC convex swap sh shape zero. This uh, tells the engine when importing this object to not import the mesh as a geometry to be rendered but as a physical uh, as a physics collision shape so this is really easy way to make to keep your collision shapes shapes in sync with your your display shapes all right okay that, that, that's how the magic is working with the rigid bodies if you're wondering so i could uh, let's add a, a little bit of these power pads let's maybe rotate that one a bit something like that and move it over here let's add a bit of, a little bit of more of these is there fun as you can see i i have a little tool i call it planting tool it enables you to plant objects in the scene uh, you can duplicate the existing uh, an existing object or create a new one uh, or move an existing object or of course create a new one by here or here just drag it, uh, as you already saw uh, and it will rotate the object based on based on the uh, based on the source geometry. For example, I can like make this little ramp here and yes, yeah, snap it back. Okay, it's snapped, but not the way I wanted it, like so. And I can place a parapet over here, and as you can see, it's it's rotated. I can place it over here. It's rotated again, and so on. All right, let's create again our our dummy dummy actor dummy actor. It's created. Now let's have a little camera that looks at it. Oh, by the way, a really cool thing that I made. If you middle click on anything, it will clear it or reset it to default. 
pretty pretty great stuff stay here uh, okay creating a camera let's make the camera walk towards the scene maybe it will be easier if i tweak it from here uh, no 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 90 was good maybe something like that maybe i don't know push it back a little bit and this gray gray thing is uh, uh, ugly let's create a sky sky i said creating a sky and there are multiple options to make sky let's let's go with this one because i don't have a texture for it you can texture it of course and uh, let's play our game bam we have our game and if i press the arrow keys it can move okay so let's one last thing which that i don't have the code typed in front of me let's make if our little player let's first save the scene actually save uh save scene as maybe ball and roll no 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 not there i wanted get ball roll assets levels level zero it not level zero it's level score level zero save oh yeah we have it and uh, let's make if the object falls from this platform uh, reset it back to some position the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna have a location locator object which will be we will use if the object falls really below uh, the some limit in y value so up value we're gonna force the object over here okay so to enable this from happening we're gonna remove that infinite infinite obstacle uh, save our thing and we're gonna use this object uh, the way we can uh, make this is to have a reference to uh, from uh, our player to that object over here and when the ball goes down uh, we can find that object and use it as a location for respawn all right so let's go back here if we want to refer other objects in the scene we gotta use object id and uh, let's say this is the res respawn locator okay this ob this object id is a way to reference other objects our objects are referenced by ids there have no cached pointers in them you have to query them every time you want them but the query is quite fast so don't worry about it let's again add it to the uh, reflection uh, system member dummy actor this thing save it hope it doesn't not crash because let, let's face it this is simple post things crash every now and then it's, it's the way the way life goes did you build it did you? yeah we have our respawn locator and uh, let's link these together we can do it by dragging and dropping for example so it's now referencing and now let's go over here uh, let's say uh, if no, no that's not a good place two lines above it is better if uh, our object position get position dot y is less than let's say minus 20 we would get the position of our object this one respond locator and we're gonna force the position i guess so we're gonna get the game world get world uh, uh, the world basically contains all the objects in the scene we're gonna get actor by id and we're gonna pass the id and we're gonna say if actor you as you know this is just an id it's not a promise that it's gonna exist so we're gonna check if it is if it exists this function will, will return no pointer if it does not okay so if the object exists we're gonna say this set position and we're gonna get the walk actor for example a bit better not that much walk actor get position and there is an extra parameter uh, which will uh, 
force the velocity of the object to be zero or to be zeroed or not. In this case, uh, the object will have quite a bit of uh, vertical velocity, maybe something else, and we want to kill it, so we'll leave it as a default, or maybe pass it like true, like so, and save it. Uh, don't crash on me right now. It almost worked. Okay, so let let's play let's play our game. Okay, we can roll around, roll around, and let's fall. We are falling, and yay, we 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 respond. Amazing. Okay, the next thing is that we can export our game. We can we to export our game we need to specify our starting level and some initial settings for the window. We're gonna save the settings and we can run the game. And this is the game standalone running. You can run it in Windows, in Linux, and in web builds via mscripten. Uh, MacOS and Android are targeted, but not currently supported. It should not be that hard to add it. It's just a question of a build system. It's not, it's not that, that hard thing to do. Uh, yeah, the engine has a shitload of more, more features, uh, but I cannot show them in, in one video. I hope you've enjoyed and see you next time. And oh, and please, uh, subscribe and follow and follow me on Twitter and whatever. Uh, I'm going to release this engine for free under the MIT license. I hope that a lot of people start using it and I can, could uh, contribute to the society by, by it. I really love this engine. It's 10 years old, 10 years in development, and I really, really want to make, make it work. So yeah, please, please help me out. Okay. Bye everyone. See ya.